The Fourier series trick depends on these integrals. You can see that almost all of these integrals are zero, only if m equals n for the sine sine or cosine cosine case do we get a non-zero value. But why is this true? The usual way to prove this is with integration by parts, but there's also a trigonometry way to reduce it to much simpler integrals. I'll show you what I mean. All these integrals are from negative pi to pi. For any integer n, the integral of sine nx dx is zero between those limits. I'll show you graphically with Desmos. Here's a graph of sine x, and I've marked from negative pi to pi with the vertical purple lines. You can see that the area above the axis and the area below the axis are equal, so the integral is zero. The same is true for sine 2x, equal areas above and below, and likewise sine 3x. So I hope it's more obvious now that any of these integrals will work out to be zero. In the same way, the integrals of cosine will be zero, because a cosine is just a sine shifted over. For example, cosine 3x. Now there's an exception in the cosine case, because while sine zero is zero, the cosine of zero is one, and we integrate 1 over the period you get 2 pi. Here's a summary of what we've said so far. But how does this help us with the Fourier integrals? They'll work for any integer n, so they'll work for any integer n plus m, or any integer n minus m. Likewise, this would work if we added any two of these expressions together or subtracted them. Now here's where the straight trigonometry comes in. Here are the formulas for the cosine of a sum or difference. If you add those two expressions together, you actually get 2 cosine a cosine b. And if you subtract the two expressions, you get 2 sine a sine b. These are the expressions we're getting in the Fourier integrals. Likewise, here are the sine of a sum or difference formulas. When you combine those by adding, you get the other expression, sine a cosine b. So if you integrate the right-hand side of this in a Fourier integral, it's the same as integrating the left side of it, and the left side integrals are going to be zero. Using this formula, there are no exceptions, so you will always get zero. But in the integrals with cosine cosine or sine sine, we do get an exception, because if a happens to equal b, then you're talking about cosine squared or sine squared. And what that means on the left is in the first one, cosine a plus b is just cosine of 2a, and the cosine of a minus b is the cosine of 0, which is 1. In the second integral, the first integral would be the cosine of 0, which is 1, and you'd be subtracting the cosine of a plus b. So you get an exception where you have a 1 that you integrate. If you divide out that factor of 2, you have 1 half. And then when you integrate over a period, you multiply by 2 pi. So half of 2 pi is pi. And that's why those integrals are true.